Hi, it's Sandy and it's time for the Full Moon Rose reading for July 2017. And uh, goodness, we're into a very in intense um, part of the, uh, of the journey. I mean, this is said to be the most intense moon, uh, full moon of the year. And it's certainly from what I am I'm seeing, um, you know, from different people that have posted on Facebook. And as you know, this is this is recorded on uh, on a Facebook uh, live to start with. So, you know, what I'm seeing is is that you know this that it's like we're um, we're coming into a a cooking pot, like a bit like a pressure cooker. Can really feel this energy beginning to cook, and we and the full moon is at, at five o'clock in the morning here in the UK tomorrow morning. So this this intense full moon, the moon is is very close to to Pluto, um, in Capricorn, and the sun is with Mars in Cancer. So there is this push for radical change, for things to really shift at this, at this moon. And it's like, um, you know, alchemy is this transformation, this, 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 uh, uh, I suppose the, the, the type of alchemy that I, I align to is this, this internal shift, this internal change that goes on that actually creates the 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 gold within our energy fields and uh, you know this time we're really being asked to to make pluto an ally uh, um you know a buddy in this process because it's it really is calling us to to deep inner uh change because you know when we create inner change within our world then there is change in the external world so yeah, this is a very much internal process. And, you know, I mean, even for me too, you know, this has been an extraordinary week. I, this last week, I, I, I spent the first three days of this week um, working in um, Champagne in France um, with a, a client who had a house to sell in France. And as many of you know, I've had years and years actually... Mm, nearly 20 years of working and being aware of the energies and spaces and it's an aspect of my work that I've sort of kept very much um, tucked away to one side and and have focused very much on the rose work but of course you know working with houses and, and um, listening to the whispered messages uh, within our spaces has got a direct connection I mean this is in a temple our, our homes are our outer temple so there's a real calling certainly in my um my world just now to to an integration to a an honoring of my journey and a bringing together of my work within the uh, coming home to the to our hearts here but also in coming home to the sacredness of our space it's like inner temple, outer temple, and that that in this place of um, moving into our heart fields, you know, the heart is the greatest of the sacred sites that we could visit, that we could rest within. It is a cathedral. It is, it is sacred temple space, and so often we um, look outside of ourselves for that place of security. Or that place of inspiration but this journey this year for me certainly is calling every time to come back in and to know the temple of the heart and it is said isn't it above the um, the oracle entrance at Delphi you know know thyself and to thine own self be true and there really is a sense of this um, when I start to look at my work with the roses or my work with spaces, it, it really is about coming home to ourselves in actually letting go of anything that is no longer in alignment with, with our most heartfelt 
desires or wishes for our lives. So um, um, hi, those that have connected with me today, I, I can see that Rain's here and uh, Roberta, Karen, BB, um, Evelyn, Anna. So, you know, thank you so much for, for joining me for the reading. So yes, you know, transformation requires us to go through perhaps periods of dis discomfort or, I mean, I find that I often go into quite a, cont a contracted space. Hi, Vicky. Um, and, uh, you know, that is my signal, if you like, to sit with it, to stay with it, to not distract, to not find um, a distraction that I can anaesthetize or numb out from uh, the, the, the discomfort I'm experiencing, but to stay with it and as you move through it, of course, there is a release and a real aha and an insight that allows for a forward movement. So, <laughs> what might the roses have in store for us at this time? Um, yeah, this is a interesting process. So, are you drawn to rose card one? to a rose card two or to rose card three. The roses more and more I'm finding um, are just extraordinary wisdom carriers um, and so insightful. Um, when I do my work with clients in their houses, um, the rose comes into it to uh, to complete the process. You know, there is a journey to to read the the space and to reveal what's what's actually um, uh, contained within the whispered messages that the different spaces in the house can offer. But it is uh, beyond the clearing. It is the um, the filling of the space with the pure love codes that really are what the rose is about and how she um, enables the the upshifting of our our energy but also the um, the energy of the space i even find just by, when i put the rose deck out um, for the clients to choose their roses, um, uh, it's just the energy shifts, the energy just moves. Anyway, rose one, rose two, or rose three? So, rose one, rose card one, is this beautiful rose angel, and she's rose angel nine, and she sits in base second chakra and she is one of the five wounds to the heart so she is the wound of abandonment and abandonment you know we could experience being feeling abandoned by another but what she's calling us to is where we abandon ourselves where we check out where we don't stay with the um, uh, the message that's coming through from the experience that we have. So Rose Angel 9 contains the jewels of self-love, self-value and self-esteem. And for me, you know, this base second chakra, this is the ruby jewel that goes up in your in your crown. You know, when we master and when we transform the five wounds to the heart, to the five jewels, this is where they sit. This is where we hold the sovereignty of our being. So this place of self-love, self-value and self-esteem, this is what she's calling you to. So if you were drawn to rose card one, you need to look at, or what she's calling you to look at, is anywhere in which you do not hold yourself in the highest regard. Where you um, 
um, question your value, where you don't do don't um, exert self care. We have to factor in self care. Self care is our self wealth. It's our value. It's our um, our cup that can stay full. You know, when when if you can imagine that, you know, that base second chakra, when that base second chakra is strong and is centered and we have a clear sense of ourselves and an honoring of ourselves in this, especially for us as women within the um, the sacral area, you know, the temple area, this this womb space, which is our, you know, which is a sacred which is sacred temple, sacred womb space. When we have value for ourselves, when we can sit upon our throne, we can bring the energy up through the body to activate the heart and to activate the pineal gland and the crown. So it allows us, it's like the base of Maslow's triangle. You know, when we, when we have that place in place, then we can take the climb up through the higher energies. But if we invest all our energy in showing up in the world in a loving way, but with having shadow aspects that we haven't addressed, that we haven't shone the light down through the heart to illuminate those areas, then they continue to leave us with a sense of not having enough security, not having a stable energy in the body to be able to really work with this vehicle, this lifetime, this sacred temple, this sacred vehicle that is our alchemical pot. And this is where the transformation happens. Always first the transformation happens in here and then outside. So, yeah, this is, a, this is she's calling you to make sure that you have filled your cup first, that it's, you know, if you, you're, you know, if you're working, walking in a desert and someone comes to you for water and you have not got this place filled in you, there's, there is, there is nothing to give. So she's a beautiful rose. She came from my, uh, my time down in, in Devon. I had a couple of years living in Devon, which was a real womb space and a healing um, place for me. And uh, this was one of the roses that was in the back garden. So she called to me to be part of the Rose Angels. So, yeah, there she is. She's Rose Angel 9 and she is the transformer of the wound of abandonment to self-love self-esteem, self-value. Very protective rose, you know, beautiful. So if you chose rose card two, she is rose bagua five. Now the bagua roses are nine roses that make up um, a box of nine squares that are qualities of our expression in the outer world. So the first three rose sets um, in the Oracle deck are all about this vertical alignment and clearing out our stories, clearing out so that we can best bring the divine light down through our bodies into the earth. This rose says, I am here. I am. I'm able to hold this, this um, heart space, and this is my heartfelt expression in the world. So she sits in the centre of the Bagua. She is the Tai Chi health centre point in the Bagua, through which everything happens. Um, you know, we we have nothing if we don't have our health, and this is where she calls us back into the stillness into coming into that rest place within us. You know, all of our actions should come from a still point and we get caught into action after action after action. 
without actually coming back within us to step out again. So she's an interesting rose because she's one that is often overlooked in the deck, but she's a beautiful rose to work with uh, for healing. Um, the rose mat in this rose is just beautiful to sleep on. She's one of my favorite ones for traveling. Um, because I, when I'm traveling, I put a rose mat actually on the pillow to, to sleep on so that it protects my head from the, any residual energy that is left um, on the pillow. So when we stay in hotels, we don't know who slept on the pillow before us. So, you know, silk is an insulative textile, so she, she protects and she allows for that coming back into center. So she's calling you to really look at your heartfelt expression in the world. And she's calling you to kindness and gentleness. She's a real deep, deep healing rose. So calling you too to, you know, make sure that you've got it. At some point during the day, you've got, even if it's only five minutes, You've got a point in the day where you are able to come back to you, you know, preferably in the morning. And it's a, a morning practice so that you make sure that you are aligned, you are in centered place before you step out into your world and into your, the busyness of your day. And if you chose Rose card three, She's come up again, and this is Rose Mar 8. And she says, I am creativity. This is a David Austin Rose. She's um, called the Lark Ascending. I'm sorry, I don't know the name of the previous two roses. Um, they were just in my path and called to be um, photographed. So this one is from the Rose Mar set, the mother of the rose, and there are 11 qualities of the awakened and empowered heart field. And she says, I am creative. I am an expression of the creator energy. And this is, the, this is my fulfillment. So she's calling you to look at your creative expression is this a culmination of one aspect of your creative expression? Is there, are there new ideas that are ready to be birthed, that are ready to, to come forward on this transformational energy that the, this full moon is offering us? You know, could it be a, a reconnection with something that you've been pretty masterful of in, in the past? Um, but perhaps have let, you know, let go for now. Is this um, an opportunity to explore what else may come up in your, in your creativity? But, or perhaps a different way of looking at something. You know, when you've been doing something for a considerable amount of time, there is an opportunity when we come to pulse points like this to reflect and to review what what it is about that particular aspect of us that really does light us up and is there something here that needs to be shifted in order for perhaps another octave of the work to be revealed so yeah she's you know she's got huge curls of of uh, petals inside of her it's like you know what else could come out of this pot very gorgeous so three very interesting but very different roses in a lot of ways here she comes to call for the for your gathering into this place of self-love self-value self-esteem coming into center beautifully into center for the expression from your heart you know what is what's calling you from your heart and then we get I am creative 
So what that what she's calling for, you know, creative expression when it comes from this sacral sense of our ourselves, you know, this sacral chakra, base sacral chakra, which is where um, our Rose Angel Nine is rooted, is all about this um, truth of who I am. Who am I inside the tribe? What is my unique expression? And Rose Bagua Five says, come to center. Come to center and you all will be seen. All will be clear. And then Rose Ma Eight says, creative. In this expression, it's creative. Mm. Ah, and Ashley is saying, you know, she, it, she's really feeling the energy of um, of Rosemar 8. And it's, you know, ah, we're geared. We are our chemical beings that, you know, this heart field expresses itself over our shoulders and down our arms to our hands. It is that that takes our, our creative expression out into the world or it comes up to be expressed through the throat and it's interesting because the throat chakra is the higher octave of that sacral chakra and I'm just reminded too in this um, astrological um, setup for this full moon we have Mars conjunct the Sun in Cancer and we have Pluto conjunct the moon in Capricorn and Pluto is the higher octave of Mars. So here we go, this shift and transformation. And it's often the case that our, our, um, our creative expression is what has the opportunity to create transformation and activation for others. So, yeah, powerful, powerful roses. Uh, thank you so much for everyone for being here and sharing and being present with these roses today. And what else have I got to share? Yeah, there's some new things cooking, definitely some new things cooking. And also, um, there's still one or two places on my um, Exploring the Magdalene Within day on the 22nd of July here in the Rosie Temple. So we'll be diving deep and allowing you to connect and tuning into her energy uh, as she is present within. So yes. Wishing you all um, a wonderful uh, full moon and um, I can feel a new uh, rose essence being birthed on this full moon in particular, all about this transformational process and new beginnings. I know we normally say new beginnings and new moon, but it's feeling like this transformation allows for something new to be um, activated for us. So thank you so much for joining me and um, for being part of this, this rosy journey. And uh, yeah, much love and rosy blessings. Bye for now. Bye bye.